to you from the Miracle Center Cathedral and it is Preacher's Corner. Oh. My name is Shiba Martha. I am so excited because I know today it is going to boil uncovered. But now, but I'm so excited. Last Saturday was amazing. I was edified. And if it is your first time watching us, we are the Preacher's Corner. We are always here every Saturday at 4 p.m. And I'm not alone. I have amazing, oh, sorry, 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 3 p.m. I was excited. Eh? I was excited. But we're always here every, every Saturday at 3 p.m. Now, I'm not alone. I have mighty men. <laughs> mighty men of God. And I have a mighty woman of valor. Is it valor? Valor. Hey, hey, hey. Mighty woman of valor. My goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, let me give the microphone to. Let me start with the mighty woman of valor. <laughs> mighty woman of valor. Akazinda loka kwate chikwano. Otubuze kwao. Woman of valor. I receive in Jesus' name. Hey, <laughs> My name is Faith Nakaembe from the Worship Harvest Mukono location. It's called Faith. Faith, as in faith, anyway. Man of God. <laughs> uh, my name is Muanguzi Joshua Junju. I fellowship with Christian Heritage in Chinawata, Kambuya. Wow. And then, Man of God. <laughs> uh, Shiba, thank you very much, Shiba, and our viewers. Uh, my name is Raj Mwai, and I'm so excited to be here. I'm so humbled to have come to you with the word of God, and I believe it is going to be massive, just like Shiba said. It is here. Yeah, we are going to get it out a difference. <laughs> but anyway, so this is a, a, a recap. Let's give them a recap of what happened last Saturday. Last Saturday, we started a topic of uh, wa If God can change your life in just a second or even less than a second, imagine what he can do through you in just 60 seconds. Guess what? Preacher's Corner and Channel 44 is giving you an opportunity to preach your best sermon in just 60 seconds. To participate in our new challenge, 60 Seconds of Power, get in touch with us on our social media platforms at Preacher's Corner Official or call us on 0200-905-669 or 0752571980. And stand a chance to win incredible prizes and an opportunity to preach the full sermon live in one of our services. Preacher's, Preacher's Corner, to, to know, know the, the will, will of God, God you, you need an, an open Bible. Bible. I receive in Jesus' name. <laughs> My name is Faith Nakadembe from the Worship Harvest Mukono location. It's called Faith. Faith, as in faith, anyway. Man of God. <laughs> Uh, my name is Muanguzi Joshua Junju. I fellowship with Christian Heritage in Chinota, Kambuya. Wow. And then, man of God. <laughs> uh, Shiba, thank you very much, Shiba, and our viewers. Uh, my name is Raj Mwai, and I'm so excited to be here. I'm so humbled to have come to you with the word of God, and I believe it is going to be massive, just like Shiba said. Is here. Yeah, we are going to get it out a difference. <laughs> but anyway, so this is a, a, a recap. Let's give them a recap of what happened last Saturday. Last Saturday, we started a topic of uh, we expounding on the Word of God. We explained what the Word of God is personally. Siraj gave us his faith, gave us her, her definition. Joshua gave us her definition. So, it was a pretty much good, good conversation. And then, we of course talked about experiences, personal experiences about the word of God in our lives. And by the time we finished uh, the last episode, we were on Sidaj, who was telling us about the importance of the word of God. You people, I'm telling you, when Sidaj crossed, like, before even we did the altar call, Sidaj spoke, Panaya Yogeda. I had a pimple, like the capo of the pimple opened. 
little fresh air entering. <laughs> a little fresh air entering, my God. My skin was edified. My goodness. So, today we are still expounding on the importance of, uh, of the word of God in our lives. And I am going to give the mic over. I'm going to hand over to the mighty woman of Vala that we have in the building, baby. Faith! Tell us. So, when we check the book of John, John 17, verse 4, mm. there's somewhere Jesus says in that very verse 14, he says that, I have given them your word. And he says, and the world hates them because they do not belong to the world. He continues and says, just as I do not belong to the world. So since the word is our identity, it is so important for you to focus on your identity. Because before you understand your identity, you can't understand the things around you. Before you understand that you're, you're, you're a lady, you can't understand the people around you. Before you understand that you're young, you can't understand that there are old people around, young people like you. So we have to understand our identity. So it is very important to understand the word. But one thing I know that if you want to get the importance of the word like in full, you have to bring it out. You have to go to it with passion. You know, things that concern God, that is why in the beginning he gave us free will. That is where we get into, you know, discovering what you desire most, what you do. We can tell you a lot in this place. But before your passion sets onto the word, you're going to listen to us, get fired up, the pimple power will open. <laughs> and before you know it, in the next week, it's going to all be down. And we don't want that. We don't want you to get excited today and tomorrow you're out of this thing. It is something you have to do because it is your identity. No, so first of all, I want you to set your heart. Set your heart. Because everything that concerns God is about heart. It is a heart issue. It doesn't concern anything with your flesh. So for you to discover the importance of the word to you, you will set your heart to be passionate about God. So maybe your prayer life backslided. Maybe you're, read, you're reading the word backslided. Maybe you're a new believer. That is point number one. Start with opening up your heart to the spirit of God. Open up your heart. You will discover the importance even those we are not going to talk about. Mm. So one thing I know, the importance of the word of God, it gives us wisdom. It opens your mind. I promise you, before I read the word of God, I was, is it dumb? Mm, mm. I was the dumbest person I know. A person must say, stupid, stupid, stupid. Mm, mm. <laughs> but before I read, the, I read the word, that was what I was. Mm. But when I started reading the word, some, something in me started opening up. Mm. So the wisdom of the supernatural, the wisdom of understanding, mm. the realm from which we come from, because this is, this is a shadow of the realm from which we come. Mm. So understanding everything about you, it comes from the word. So the word of God is wisdom. I love David. He understood the word of God. He said that then I will be able to overcome my enemies by telling them your word. Mm. So it is wisdom to solutions. Wisdom to, to, you know, things are stuck. The word of God is the answer. Things are not working out. The word of God is the answer. He says that I rely on your word. I put my trust in your word. Because he knows that when, whenever things are not right, the word of God will help. Whenever he is failing, the word of God will help. So, actually, if you've not read the, the Bible, you can read about that guy. He will make you fall in love with the word. He will, make, he will give you passion. He will open up your mind about the word. He says that your word is a lamp unto my feet. What is he meaning? Mm. Psalms 119 verse 105. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and the path that I take. So, for you to take a certain path, you have to have wisdom of it. So the word of God opens up your mind to the direction of things you should take. To young ministers, the word of God is key. You're not going to preach experiences you've got from people. No, the word of God is going to open you up to the supernatural power of God. Many people are desiring. They are desiring to do miracles. They are desiring to heal people. They are like, this is our generation. What? You're going to say all that, but before the word of God has dug deep on the inside of you, you're not going to do anything. You're not going to reveal itself. That is why Jesus says that I've come to fulfill all righteousness. That scripture may come to pass. Every time he did something, he was like, don't you remember? 
from the kingdom of from from the time of John the apostle the kingdom of God has been taken by the violet he kept referring to the word he told them you don't remember Isaiah bringing t- telling you about me that I will come so the word of God is what is going to birth the Jesus like characters in you so you're a young minister you're a young believer a young worshiper it is the word of God get deep in the word that is why he says in the story of the sower that as the seed fell on the ground the fertile ground its roots dug deep mm-hmm. its roots were so deep that as the f- plant grows winds and whatever comes storms and whatever is going to come you're going to overcome because you're dug deep mm-hmm. david wow. tells solomon this word this book of the law meditate on it day and night mm-hmm. so it is the only thing that you need to hold on to as a believer if you want to be someone if you want to become in the kingdom of god it is all that is going to take you meditate on it day and night fall in love with it be passionate about it wow this guy is anxious please say something siraj now aka microphone aka put say one you just receive it but it feels like you want to add on something when she i don't know her there is where she said that she was the dumbest person she knew before she knew god uh, you know the bible tells us that uh, man man is is like a beast if he doesn't god he, he doesn't have the word of god in his life when we read in the bible in the book of uh, revelation i think that is uh, chapter 13 verse 18 you see he's compared to you see the number of the beast and yeah. that is the number of man yeah. that is that means man without god he becomes like a beast praise lord Uh, so so you see even even the bible when you read in second timothy chapter 2 verse 15 the bible says study to show thyself approved unto god a workman that needed that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth mm. that is way, that is that is way that is why people need to prove themselves to god you know god wants to trust you with what you are asking but you prove yourself before this god you prove yourself in the word the more you know about yourself and you believe because there are people who believe but do not know the word to keep them in the places of their belief that's why you see one time jesus is is quoted in john chapter 8 verse 31 as he says then said jesus to those jews which believed on him underline which believed on him these ones had the belief but he says to them if you continue in my word then are you disciples are you my disciples indeed which means they are disciples but they are disciples also indeed so that's the, the word uh, the, the word he instructs us that continue in my word we, when we read in the book of acts we see we see some people some of the disciples they say that we gave ourselves daily to the ministry of the word and prayer that this is a place of giving yourself it is like uh, you see if one man died for us he carried the the he says he's giving us the lighter burden he took the heaviest he took the one which was heavy uh, he did not take away every burden he did not take away everything but he gave us a lighter one that we just come to his word and we find solution because our wage was death because we were in sinful ways we were in what now if a man now knows the word of god and how god has brought him from uh from a certain thing or a certain journey break, breaking off the thistles the thorns and making him an all-round christian a disciple indeed he's a one who has who will continue in the word of god but you cannot continue in what you do not know that is why you have to read the word of god and get to know it these bible things in the bible they are not just stories without power they are, they are they, when a man makes a, a device if i make a laptop I'll, i will create a laptop manual if i sell you a tv i'll give you a tv manual to show you how the tv works so god created man and gave the manual which is his perfect will his perfect will which is the bible the writing of the man of god that when we look unto it the bible says it's like we are beholding ourselves into a mirror So when we go away uh, we, we we have not to forget this word we have not that is why that is why we should continue in the word and remind ourselves always that's what i would add on her wow. yeah wow siraj actually uh, faith when you are talking uh, about um, the, the the importance of the word of god um <clears throat> a question popped up in my mind and i hope we can have a healthy discussion about this um is Do, is there like 
God give me a tarash, a tarash, Um, in life, hmm? as general, like I'm a young person, there's a teenager, there's a married woman, there, there are different kind of people, Kali. In life, is there everything in the word of God? Like when, when, when someone is facing issues with education and someone is facing issues with uh, maybe they are, they are having issues with depression, maybe they are having issues with finances, maybe they are having issues. You see, usually sometimes people pay therapists <laughs> for solutions you get. So me in my head, I'm like, but I had paying a therapist. Is it there anywhere in the word of God? Where well, there's something that can solve this issue other than just paying a therapist. So, is there, does, does the word of God cover everything in life? Is it me? Yeah, it's all of us. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> it's all of us. Thank you, Shiba. But I, I, I want, I, I ask for just one minute about what Faith was talking about when she was addressing uh, wisdom in the word. There is something I want us in one minute about wisdom. Uh, from the word, when you read it in the book of Psalms 119, there's something interesting there. Psalm 119, verse 130. The Bible says something beautiful. The Bible says, it says that the entrance, let me read from the NKJV. The Bible says, the entrance of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Because we are addressing the importance of the word of God. Yes. And there's something she brought out. Yes. Now let us read the same scripture, the same verse in Amplified. It says, the entrance and the unfolding of your words give light. Their unfolding gives understanding in black discernment and comprehension to the simple. Now, He's telling us that as we read the word of God, when the word unfolds before our faces, he says we receive discernment and comprehension. Meaning, in the word we get to have right judgment. In the word we see the definitive judgments of God concerning diverse matters. Like when I read, I can tell this is what God thinks concerning this and that. And like Faith said, without the word of God, Shiba, personally, I found myself making errors. Just because I didn't know what was the definitive judgment of God concerning that issue. And maybe probably even you. Remember Jesus himself in Matthew 7 from verse 24. He's talking about a wise man. And he's, he's defining a wise man as someone who hears his words and acts upon them. That is wisdom. Meaning wisdom comes from the words of the Lord Jesus. You hear and you do. That is wisdom. Meaning, when we give ourselves the word of God, it is amazing how easy you will judge matters. For example, I've seen it. You, sometimes you hear somebody speaking, and because you read somewhere, well, you know what God says about this particular stuff, and you are like this guy. You, you can just tell. It, there is that wisdom and understanding that comes upon you. You judge things right. But sometimes you find that a person can just speak any hour you listen to what you don't, you have no idea. You don't know what God says about that particular thing. So I really agree with her that in the word of God, when we embrace it, we get to understand. You get it. We receive comprehension concerning the verse matters. And it helps us not to error. Because why? We don't know. The Bible says, I think it is Matthew 22 verse 28, if not 29. It says, we do error not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. I can tell you that the issues we are seeing in marriage, in businesses, in ministry, in the world, it is because we are ignorant to certain scriptures. Something is not, we are not connected somewhere to the wisdom of God in scriptures. So we end up making errors because if we are not attending the word of God, it means we are going to walk by our carnal mind. We are going to go by the devices of men which are destined to fertility. So if we give ourselves the word of God, it is amazing how ways. Actually, Paul tells somewhere that when that from childhood you've known the scriptures which are able to to make your ways unto salvation so for me you sometimes people people confess to be wise and this person can't quote for scriptures and i don't understand what is their definition of wisdom because according to god wisdom is defined 
by the knowledge of scriptures, by the knowledge of the word of God. Remember, we agreed and we understood from scripture that Jesus is the word of God. And the Bible calls Jesus the wisdom, but not only the wisdom, but also the power of God. 1 Corinthians 1, 24. So Jesus is the wisdom, but also the power. Though sometimes we want the power and leaving the wisdom part of him aside, which is not good. He's the power and the wisdom of God. So I want to come back to the question you, you, you asked me. Of, does the word address everything? Every sphere of life. Now, there is a beautiful scripture, I think, that can touch that issue. It is Romans 15. Romans 15, verse, let me read from NKJV. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. I think it can help us. The Bible says, I'm reading NKJV. It says, for whatever things, whatever things, no, why, why is it playing games? For whatever things were written before, were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of scriptures may have hope. The Bible says, whatever things were written, oh, scripture, it says we're written for our learning, that we, through the patience and comfort of scriptures, we may have hope. Meaning, in the wisdom of God, in the scriptures, we can receive comfort in any situation. You can relate to any story in the scripture. Because we know the end. We can tell how it ended with different characters in the Bible. So, when you are in any situation, I understand and I believe this scripture is true. It addresses any, any, any situation, any condition. And if you had one, I think you would, you would pose it to me. And I think, uh, yeah. So, the scriptures can address anything. And another proof is, is in 2 Timothy chapter 3. When you read verse 16 and 17, it says, All scriptures are given by God for edification, building, teaching. And it says in 17 that the man of God will be thoroughly equipped, that we believers will be thoroughly equipped for every good work and lacking nothing. Meaning God knows that the whole in the wholesomeness of the scriptures, there we can be thoroughly equipped, whatever we need, in any situation, the scriptures can equip me and you to be able to address any situation in your life. That's what I can say. And if you had one, because I'm like, now which kind of circumstance is not in the Bible? And if you had one, we will see. So that's what I understand. Thank you, Shiba. <laughs> but I think that is a very, very interesting. Because me, there's a time when I, was, I used to ask myself that question. I say, no, yay. What does the word of God say about dating? Okay, there's a word of God. There's a word, like, I wanted to find out yeah, if I'm in a relationship with a boyfriend, what does the word of God say about that? What does the word of God say, maybe? What do I want to Like, uh, probably uh, how, 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 how you, you, you talk to people, communication skills, small, small things, you know? I used to ask myself, I was like, where can I get, uh, where can I get like um, uh, guidance on this, on this particular situation? Until one of my friends was like, you know, Shiba, these days there is technology. So <laughs> what you do, what you do, you have to use it to your advantage. Mm. Just go to Google. <laughs> go to Google. Use this technology for your own benefit. It can either destroy you or it can help you. So you put scriptures on dating, scriptures on time, scriptures on money, scriptures on sex, scriptures on anything, any topic mm. in life, scriptures on corruption, scriptures on gossip. Abawala, you need to focus on that one. Gossip! <laughs> <laughs> the day that I found out the scripture about gossip, I, I, know, I had an issue of Lugambo. But the day I noticed of how God was dealing with Lugambo in the Bible, I was like, hmm? <laughs> I better keep quiet. <laughs> I better keep quiet, you know? Mm. So there is every, every answer that you're looking for, every answer that you're looking for mm. is in the word of God. Yeah. So uh, just to add on, uh, like people can advise that way and in many ways. Uh, but the word of God, uh, the scriptures tell us that these words are spirit and life. 
And also Jesus tells us that he came that we may have life and life in fullness, that we may not lack. And he tells us that he, like he's a good shepherd, we shall not want when we come to him. Uh, but now the needs that come around, uh, they help us to draw us closer to God, that we, we seek him sometimes more. That's why we are longing for the presence of God. That is a need. We always need it. We, those needs draw us to a place to seek God. And uh, God allows them so that it is natural for you to know that he is an answer. How will be, he be an answer where there is no question? How will, he be, how, will be, how will he be a provider if there is no need? How will he be? That is where God comes in. And he says also in his word, uh, he says, you see, the world can advise the, the, the way you got advice. That it could either spoil you or do what. But I believe even the prodigal son was advised by some people. Because that is knowledge that he, could, he had, en- that had entered his head. That you know what? Get off your portion from your father, your heritage, and go away. Hmm? Sp- like, be like, maybe the, the for example, I, I might need knowledge about my, my colleagues, my peers. You get it? Like how to relate with them. How, this relation, everybody's k- kicking off, like he's have, going away with this. What is God saying about this? But there is a story that tells us about this. That this boy wanted to be like others. Like having other people as the image you look unto who is not Christ, who is the word of God. And we saw that the end thereof is destruction. We saw this boy, he went, he spent out his lay, he went to the, uh, the way the things of this world does, like the clubs, he went to everything, the drinking, the sleeping with prostitutes and everything, and he lost everything. And he went and he fed with pigs. This, and feeding pigs, according to those people, all those people, it was the lowest of the, like the lowest, the least of the things you could ever do. Eh? And now he fed them, but as he was there, he remembered that there is a father. So whenever we look into, like, the true, whenever, you, like, you look into your heart, the Bible tells us that when he realized, when, like, otherwise he was, other things were a lie. You know, we can live a life of lies. We can live a life that is not sown in God. And you think, but, but, now, like, I don't feel the need for God. I don't feel even the desire to know God. I don't feel like, why are you advising me now, like, for the word of God? Even when you tell me, like, read the word of God, I don't feel it. I will read and sleep. I will do this and, uh, like, this, these are actual questions people be like, this is what I feel, even when I go in my bedroom. But when you know that this is the air I breathe, when you know that, because Jesus, when he described the word of God in John chapter 1, we saw that this is the life. And the life in all men. You know, people do not breathe oxygen. When we were in COVID, we saw people, like you might think we breathe oxygen. People were on like cylinders of oxygen, but still lost oxygen. You get it? We do not breathe the air, but it was in enough supply. So this is where I, I want to tell men that the life we have is the word of God. That is why we exist. But for a special grace upon the earth, that is why we are still living, even for a person who has not read, you are still around, because God wants you to realize by the situation that you have faced, that this situation might cause you to turn around and face to God. God brings situation to such people who do not know him, so that they might know that they need God in their lives. And to them that know God, he brings to them so that they are hunger. You know, there are some people that can get satisfied with the word of God. Ah, already I have what I want, now what? Now they dwell in a place of comfort. Instead of, in, uh, instead of sitting in a place of service to God. So it kills. It, it, they begin to deteriorate like that. Like that, like that. That's why even in the word of God, Jesus tells, tells us that, are you willing to take off my cup? Like he was, he, he was answering the woman who wanted, you get, like, who wanted his sons want to sit at the right hand of Jesus, another at the left. And he said, that is not for me to give. These were already disciples. But Jesus says, this is not for me to give. This is not for me to give. That's why it's important that we know why certain things happen. Certain, when you know, when you know, you will be comfortable and you will seek God on the right side of the net. You will not fish wrongly. You cannot fish all night. But where God says, ah, uh-uh, put it at the right. Where I fished all the times at the right. That's why you see people applying the same scripture and it's not working. And it's working for the other. Because something is missing. An instruction like the the. Are you genuine in what you're speaking? Because God is looking for a sincere heart. He says, now is the time that true worshippers shall arise and worship the Father in spirit and in truth. 
Is it the truth? Is it the truth from the heart? All you are, you, you have gotten, like I have mimicked, I've heard you speak, and then I, I, I've got, it, I've got some copy, lines yeah, from you your prayer. I have seen that <laughs> when you say those lines, the lame walked, yeah. the blind eyes saw. I, I mean, without, with lack of an experience of such a place, hmm, without the knowledge of how it works, like I have not been dealt with, I, I also go and speak, and later I'm disappointed and say, uh, and say, uh, these things don't work. Maybe that guy has certain things. Yeah. The truth is, it is only the Holy Spirit that can quicken us with the word of God. Wow. I, I loved his, there, there's somewhere I've remembered, these guys that were working with Paul. So Paul, after Paul performs his miracles, they come back in the name of God and in the name of Paul, mm. we cast you out. They tell him, ever. Paul, we know and God, we know. But who are you? So that is one thing we have. We don't have to skip. Who yeah. are you in the word of God? Yes, yes, you want to understand it, but where is your stand? Actually, oh, yes, but the Bible says that I call them friends. Mm -hmm. Are you reading something that comes from a friend? Please don't read what we've told you. Actually, I think if they defined themselves, these demons would go away. <laughs> Without any prayer. <laughs> yeah, you can add. <laughs> now, there's something he touched. Eh? There's something he touched when he was addressing... Like, there's where I talked about the direction, the word giving direction. Yes. There's something just attached. Eh? And Shiba, I want, allow me to talk about this. Please do. Uh, as young people, for me, it is always my craving, and I believe it is in many of our young brothers and sisters there. Like, when he talked about it, I remembered. As young people, we are desiring to live right, and we addressed it, I think, I believe last time, but something has come into my mind. Like, the word of God, according to what we, we are discussing and what I've heard them share, it is like in the word of God is the definitive meaning of deliverance. And many of us are seeking for deliverance. And Musei always says, you know what Musei always says about deliverance. But something has just come into my mind. When you read his Psalms 119, verse 9, he says, how can a young man cleanse his way? He says, by acknowledging and by going mm. after thy word. Meaning that as young people, the only way we can cleanse our way, the definitive, or the real definition of deliverance concerning conduct, concerning even spiritual deliverance, it is when we give ourselves to the word of God. There is something interesting, because when you read Matthew chapter 12, from verse 21, the Lord Jesus was addressing the issue of demon possession. And he's, he's, he was actually addressing with the meaning of real deliverance. Because many of us want deliverance. Even young people. You go here, you go there. Prophet Gundi, Apostle Gundi, Teacher Gundi, Jangu Bakulagule. I, am, I want to give you a remedy now. Jesus says, if an unclean spirit goes away from a person, when it comes, after, after a moment, it comes to check. But the scripture says it finds the out empty. It goes back and brings more seven more wicked spirits. And now Jesus is telling us, what, what do I learn from there? Jesus is telling us that deliverance is not complete just because you've manifested. You get it? Deliverance is not complete just because the spirit has left you. But Jesus is saying that deliverance is when the empty space where the spirit was is filled. According from that portion of scripture, that's what I understand. Because when a spirit goes, it comes. When it finds you empty, it brings more wicked. Meaning, it is not deliverance because the spirit has left you. It is not deliverance because you have say manifested. That, say that again, bro. Say that again. But because it's, it's the Lord who said it. Yeah. And I was like, what? Meaning, to Jesus, deliverance is when the space where the demon was, the space where the spirit was, is filled. And what fills it? I believe it is the word of God and the Holy Ghost. The word of God and the Holy Ghost. When we apply ourselves to it, the Spirit has gone, but if you don't fill that space with the word of God and the Holy Spirit, that is not deliverance. And we mistake deliverance for manifestation and what? The Spirit living. Unless that person is filled, is fed, and is injected by the word of God. No wonder. If the Bible says that the word is the Spirit, yeah? the word of God is the Spirit, and life. You know, for me, I, I love connecting scriptures. Eh? The word is spirit and is life. And he says that God anointed Jesus with the spirit. And the spirit is the word. Meaning, 
And he, I want you to see something. The spirit is the word. God anointed Jesus who is the spirit. Anointed. And he says it is the anointing that breaks yokes. Meaning that real deliverance comes by us embracing and giving ourselves to the word. You know, Shiba, we love fighting. Demons, we love fighting spirits. And I understand because I have been there and I'm, I'm also a work in progress. You get it? You are struggling with something. And the devil always wants us to fight something because he knows we can't win or we can't have victory over what Jesus has already obtained the victory for us. So instead of us standing, the victory Jesus has already made available, the devil will encourage you to fight to get the victory. So for me, I see that we really need to... What I'm trying to say is that the word of God, when you say, apply yourself to the word of God. Shiba, what for me I used to get is that you have to be, obey this, don't you do this, don't you do this, don't do this. Pastor Kanye always explains this scripture in Isaiah 10, 27. He says, the anointing, the yoke shall be broken because of the anointing. It is not the anointing will break the, the yoke. No. The yoke breaks because of the anointing. And the anointing is the spirit of God. And the spirit is the word. Meaning, as I give myself the word, for you, just give yourself the word. You may be suffering with maybe sleeping around, or loma, or backbiting. But the Bible says, if you can only let the anointing increase, if you can just let the word of God increase on your life, the yoke is going to break off thy neck. You don't have to fight it. Because the entrance of the word brings light. When you are in a dark room, you, when you switch off the light, the light doesn't fade darkness. The darkness disappears. Now the devil is using, his, is using it as a device to fight believers, to cause us to fight darkness. No. Jesus says, introduce light. Embrace light. Bring in the word. When the word fills you, the things will disappear. They will break. As the word grows on you, they break off you. And that's what I've been experiencing. And I can attest that it works. Because the anointing, is the, the yoke breaks. Because of, as the word increases on you, certain things has to leave. They have to leave. And that's what I call deliverance. I actually have a yes, testimony name. about yes, that. Yes. One brother of mine comes to me and tells me, you think, you think a lot of things happen because they pray for you? No. Not a lot of things happen in the place of prayer, but a lot of things happen in the word of God. You sit down and read the word. He was testifying to me about he was bounded, how he was bounded and things happening wrong in his life. But he told me as he was reading the word, one day he's reading the word and he feels something going off his head. Wow. So he thought, ah, maybe this is drama. So he continues to read the word, prays through the word. In the long run, he discovers that some habits left before he knows it, he has yeah. been transformed. But it was the word of God. And that takes me back. It has been itching me. You said that, is there, is there anything that is not answered in the Bible? I promise you, everything is answered in the Bible. David understands it. He says in Psalms 119, he says that, I'm lying in the dust. Receive me by your word. He was confused. So he's telling him, receive me by your word. Okay, I am lost. But your word, what does it say in this situation? He says, yeah. my enemies are taunting me. Help me answer them by your Ma word. We can bread. read that. Psalms 119. Shakate. Please get there with me. Psalms 119. Let's get to verse 25. It's the one which says, I lie in the dust. Revive me by your word. You know? I am confused. Your word, revive me. So if, unless we understand, we are going to tell you this and tomorrow you're going to be confused and call someone. But unless you understand this point behind it, the heart of God behind it, for you, the heart of God behind as to why this scripture was breathed unto David to write. It was that even when you're, you're confused, the desire for you to be revived is in the word of God. He doesn't say that, eh, hey, speak to me, God. No, he's trying to reveal to you that the desire is in the word of God. And verse 28, I weep with sorrow. Encourage me by your word. So what else are you looking for? He says, Turn my eyes, 37, turn my eyes from worthless things and give me life through your word. You're distracted. You're going through a lot of things, peer pressure, what? Turn me through your word. There's someone I love, mm. he says, quicken me, O oh Lord, Marado. that I will know my days. Shut you cannot mess up if you understand the heart behind that scripture. Because when you feel like you're going off, you remember, hey, his word is a lamp unto my feet. Let me check, where am I standing? Where is my stand? This is our only inheritance. It is the only heritage we get from God. 
It is not the preachers that preach the power they present, but this is the only heritage we got. It is the only support we get from all sides. One friend of mine was testifying to me. She said, one time I was praying in the what? Then all of a sudden I see a vision, people standing around me. And I'm like, okay, what did that mean? And she was like, before the vision was ending, before the vision ended, someone came and told me in the vision that you see the people standing by you, you will never walk alone. As long as you have the word, you will never walk alone. So do not consider it like you are alone. As long as you have the word, you are not alone. Amen. Wow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you people. I wish time could really allow us to, 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 to finish this topic, but it is a topic that we shall always continue. Please make sure you catch us next Saturday for Preacher's Corner at exactly 3 p.m. We shall be continuing. We have so much to talk about the value and importance of the word of God. Otherwise, it's been an amazing, amazing conversation. So, this Saturday, we are still emphasizing. We are having a Preacher's Corner anniversary, baby. Wow, wow, wow. We are going to be celebrating again in July. It's going to be a party after party. <laughs> if you know what I'm oh, saying. Shana. If you don't get it, forget, forget it. about oh, it. <laughs> But of course, we, we party, party, clean party, see, 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 any party, jemu magic, clean party, word after word. So when is it going to be? In July? Yeah, in July. In July. Yeah. And uh, for the days which I'll be communicating, that, that's why we tell you to go on our social media platforms and follow us on Instagram at Preacher's Corner. So if you're out there and you're watching us and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ and you want to do that today, well, here is an opportunity for you. Pastor Siraj. <laughs> faith at where you know? Faith at to Kasuke. Faith to Kasuke. So, just open up your heart as you declare this. Remember, I told you that things concerning God do not work with what you speak, what you say, how you move your hands, how you move your head. Some people pray, Hamara. no, it doesn't happen that way. But where is your heart focused? So, open your heart and speak these words with me, with your, with your whole if you really mean it. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for the words I've heard. I thank you for they've told me there is an entry of light through your word. I thank you for this light I receive today in Jesus' name. I open up my heart. I open up my thoughts. Dwell in me. Quicken me to become that which you wrote about me. I choose salvation today. I choose to be born again. And I confess this day and this hour that I am born again. Receive me by your word. Renew me by your word. Give me the desire. Give me the hunger. Give me the thirst. You can keep praying. You can keep desiring and speak whatever you want to become. But trust me, this Christ you've received is going to change your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Amen. Till next Saturday. See you. We love you. God bless you. And in case you're interested in having a platform like this as Preacher's Corner, you can follow us and you can dial those numbers, send us an SMS for you to join us on this platform. Otherwise, God bless you. Bye-bye.